Good afternoon. Uh, no, Jackie screwed that up last week. <laughs> Don't all jump at once. So what is it about this team that's so tough to play? They've given you guys fits over the years. Yeah, uh, a number of different things. First and foremost, they play a very physical style of football, a brand of football, um, which obviously we're very uh, familiar with. But that's one of the uh, responses that um, a physical team needs in order to have trouble with or trouble against. So when you put two physical-minded um, teams together, you typically get a good football game. So uh, that's always been the case. It's been the case since I've been here. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job and obviously had uh, extreme success with it this year. Pete was just talking about how, despite what kind of the obvious stakes of this game, but you know, as, as a team of players, you guys, every game just has to sort of be the same. But is that easy to do as a player to not look at, you know, to not look at kind of what's on the line this week and just treat it the same as any other week? Or? No, it's not. It's not easy. Um, if it was easy, then everybody would would do this. You know, I think um, humans in general, we have a hard time putting uh, or getting past our mistakes, getting past things that don't go our way. But as uh, as as competitors, as football players, as uh, professionals in this sport, we have to do that because that's our job. Um, so when we come out here for this practice, for tomorrow's practice, for this following game, we're going to have the right mindset uh, in order to give us the best opportunity to win. Hey, what is that mindset that you have then? Is it more about winning or execution play by play? What is that mindset that's needed? Uh, well, there's a, there's a number of different um, philosophies. For me specifically, it's play by play. Uh, you have to be in the moment. The best way for any to me, any individual to have success at a high level is that you have to be fully uh, um, disciplined and, and involved in that moment. Uh, if you're worried about what happened before, if you're worried about what's going to happen in the future, then you're going to miss uh, what's in front of you. And so for me and for a lot of our guys in our room, it's all focused on that moment. So um, that's how we approach, usually that's how we approach uh, the games. Does it ever waver when you're not getting the ball early or it's not going your way that that focus? On Absolutely. Your I'm a human, not a robot. So, uh, you know, speaking personally, um, you know, if, if, if I'm not getting targeted in the first half or if I, if I don't get to touch the ball, uh, obviously there's, you know, there's a mental process that you have to go through there. Uh, again, I'm, pro I'm a professional, been in here for seven years now, so we've gone through that process a number of times where I've had practice at it. Uh, so, you know, you, you learn how to cope with it. You learn that you have to stay, in, again, stay in that moment. You have to focus on the things that you can control, uh, blocking, making sure that you're getting other guys open and staying in the game plan so that when that opportunity does arise that you are taking advantage of it. So, yes, there are there is that aspect to it. But, um, again, seven years, I've had a lot of practice at it. Have you kept that internal? Or, like, for instance, last week, Jimmy Graham, one target, first half. Yeah. Do you talk – you guys talk among yourselves as as the game goes on to keep yourselves on, on task. Um, <clears throat> if if I see that it needs to be said um, out loud, then yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, however, Jimmy Jimmy Graham has been in this league for a long time. He's you know caught a lot of passes, um, had a lot of struggles, but obviously has had a lot of success as well. So um, he's been he's been through it. It's not his first rodeo. How has this offense evolved or improved since he played LA early this season? Uh, we're more more versatile uh, in game plan, play structure, play design, um, the way that we play off of each other. Uh, as you can see, Paul Richardson has become a huge factor in our passing game. Um, you know, we've we've brought in Mike Davis, so he's kind of solidifying our running game when he's in there. So we've uh, we've approved, but um, we still have a lot of work to go uh, to do, obviously. So uh, we'll continue to do that. The message that Pete has about not treating any game differently, what, what would be the downside of doing that? Um, what would be the downside of treating games differently? Of making a big deal, like this game, for instance, right. you know, with the division implications, what would be the, the downside of making a big deal out of it? Well, if you're not consistent in your approach, um, then you can sometimes overextend yourself, sometimes use too much energy. Uh, again, you know, the, the normal human reaction is it's a big game, you got to get up for it, you got to, but. When it all comes down to it, it's still football. It's still a game. The field's the same size. They're going to throw at you the same coverages that you've seen all year. Um, so nothing really changes. And so you can't change. Um, and Pete has always described us as, you know, every game is a championship opportunity. And so when we have actual championship opportunities, 
we're already prepared for it. We've already been practicing. We've already we already have the, the right mental mindset. And so when we go out there, we're still going to remain remain to be ourselves. And usually that gives us an advantage over our opponent who doesn't necessarily do that. You see? Do you notice? What do you notice in opponents who think the game's big? What What are the actual tangible results? <clears throat> they try to do too much. They go outside of their um, their own means. They make things up. Um, you know. It, we always talk about it in our room like in, or on this team. We don't need you to be somebody that you're not. We need you to be you. We need you to be the best you that you can be because that's enough. If you try to be somebody else, or you try to be something else, then you're not going to be consistent. You're not going to be able to act or to be somebody else consistently. Um, and so that's what you see with teams who do that. You know, they're, typically they're up and down. Um, you know, they have their struggles. Uh, year in and year out because they don't have an identity. And for here, us here, we have our, our identity of who we want to be and who we are, uh, game in and game out. Statistically, you guys are throwing it deep. They're, they're defined as 20 yard downfield or more passes than anybody in the NFL. I think you guys are second, but um, is, there, is that just sort of happening or is there some reason why you, you feel like that's happening this year with you guys? Uh, no idea. You'd have to ask Daryl Bevel when he comes up here. When uh, Russell was repeating and we're playing for first place next next week over and over again. Did that resonate with you and with the rest of the team? Um, no, not really. I think that's, you know, we, we're kind of used to how Russell um, speaks, uh, the verbiage that he uses. Um, and what he's trying to relay there is that, you know, we haven't lost anything. Everything is still right in front of us. We still have an opportunity to play for first place this week. So don't get too negative. Don't get too down. You know, stay focused on the task at hand. I think that's what or I know. That's what he was preaching. Um, so yeah, it, we. You know, I know that there were some things said about that comment. Uh, there's nothing negative that needs to be reported about that. Uh, it's just the mindset of you know we're not giving up. Everything's still in front of us. Doug, some would think of it as a cliche, but the role the crowd can play, even on the road, obviously with the other side, yeah. maybe kind of remind <clears throat> people about how impactful that can be on Sunday. Yeah, it, it can be huge. You know, we've talked about it in here numerous times. The 12th man is, uh, they, they, they definitely have a presence on the field for us. Uh, opposing offenses struggle. They can't hear, they can't communicate. So it makes it easier on our defense. Um, you know, and, and when the defense is watching the ball, they get, usually they get a, a jump on the offensive line. The defensive line does. So it, it's been a, a huge factor for us in the past and I have, yeah, I expect it to be the same for us, a huge advantage for us in this game. You mentioned just the human nature aspect of all this. When you know that you've got four or five pro bowlers potentially out on defense, is there a natural reaction almost to say, hey, we got to step up our game even more on our side to kind of compensate for what's happening over there? Yeah, human nature would tell you, okay, look, you know, there's going to be some kind of give here on the defense, so we have to do more offensively. But, you know, for the most part, you know, we have to correct that as professionals, as people who've been here for a long time. No, we're not going to change our mentality. We're not going to try to make things up. We're going to continue to go out there and, and, and do what we've always planned to do, which is put points on the board. And so we're going to do that in the fashion in which we know how. And uh, I have no doubt that our defense is going to go out there and put a good game plan up, regardless of the fact that, you know, some guys are missing. Um, you know, <laughs> as, as tough as it is to say and to hear, it's the next man up. That's the nature of this business, so um, it is what it is. Compared to the first game in L.A. when you guys got 16 points, how different is this offense, your offense this time? I think we're more explosive. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we're more ver versatile. Uh, Paul Richardson has become a factor. Um, Tyler is, is healthier again. Uh, Mike Davis is, is back in the game, um, or in the game, I should say. Um, uh, Luke Wilson, Jimmy Graham, all these guys are starting to come along, and we've got more chemistry with uh, with Russ. And uh, obviously, our offensive line is a little bit different than it was uh, that game. So, you know, we um, I feel like we're a much more complete offense than we were when we first met him. Are you a Star Wars fan, Doug? I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You gonna see the new one? Uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, I don't know when. I don't have a, a lot of free time like you guys do, so. Thursday is my wife's birthday, so I got to take her out to dinner. Can't really ruin that by telling her we're going to go watch Star Wars. Um, and then Friday, I'm going to be here all day. Got to get prepared for this game, so I won't get home till late anyway. So, favorite character? Favorite character? Um, CP three O for sure. C three P O. Yeah. 
Anything else? Thanks, guys.